Milky Way Imaging and Processing next. Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today I'm here with Maxwell Palau and we're going to talk about DSLR Milky Way Imaging and Processing. Maxwell is a very talented photographer and you're going to get a lot of information from his tutorial here. Hi, my name is Maxwell Palau with Star Dude Astronomy and I'm here talking to you a little bit about Milky Way processing and imaging. First thing you need to get is a nice DSLR camera. Um, the, the one that I use is a Canon 60D. Uh, you'll find out there's actually a bigger market out there for Canons in the astrophotography world. Um, generally they tend to be more astrophotography specific, even coming out with one camera specifically for astrophotography such as the 60DA and the 20DA. This is just a, just a standard 60D and this is what I use for my astrophotography. Um, and equipment that you're probably going to need as well is extra batteries, definitely extra batteries. So having a little extra battery pack, having double battery packs inside there as well as just extra batteries in case these run out, having all your extra batteries is definitely good to have. Now, if you're in a campsite where you happen to have power, then you would definitely want to have a power hookup for your camera so that way you can power it up directly. Next thing you need to have is lots of space, having your SD cards. Uh, so I have my, all my 32s, 16s, and 8s in here just in case I need to get any more space. Um, another major important thing to have is your intervalometer, okay, or a way to take your, your timed shots. Natively, the cameras, all your Canon cameras usually go up to about 30 seconds. Other times you might need to go longer. For Milky Way shots though, generally 30 seconds is going to be pretty good for you. If you want to go a little bit longer, taking other nighttime shots, you're definitely going to want to use your intervalometer. Now if you're doing time-lapse photography, again, this is going to be invaluable for you. This one's the one I use, it's called by Neewer, N-E-E-W-E-R, plugs right into the camera, you set up your time, set up your duration, set up your how many images you want to take, or an infinite amount of images, and let it run. So you don't have to worry about that. Lastly, probably the most important thing to have is your lens. Okay, probably one of the most popular lens with Galaxy photographers is the Rokinon 14mm f2.8. It is a great lens, sharp, it's a manual lens. The automatic functions of some really high priced lenses are not really needed because it's going to be stationary, sitting still at a fixed focus point. So having something like this would be great to have just because of its, less, you know, of its cost. This is about 350 bucks on Amazon and it's great to have. Super sharp, you can see the big, wide lens right there. And it stops down to f2.8. So you want to have it down at about f2.8, fully wide open, imaging at your galaxy. Now probably one of the most important things you're going to need to have is a sturdy tripod and a tripod head. Without a sturdy tripod, you'll have very shaky images or even possibly blurred images, especially on a windy night. So if you have a nice heavy duty, like this one's a very thick aluminum tripod, okay, be able to hold onto your camera, that'll be give you nice clear shots, as well as have, having a nice head for the camera. I'm using a ball head for mine, so that way I can attach the camera right on top, get it to the right angle, and let it go. So here's the camera when it's all hooked up and ready to go. You can see it here sitting on the tripod on the ball head. It's got the 14 millimeter lens on it ready to go. Stop down to f2.8. Now a lot of people talk about this particular control. It's the intervalometer by Neewer. And if you look on Amazon, a lot of these controls actually do not have an on and off switch. So they'll say, oh my gosh, how do I turn this off? How do I turn it off? And uh, I came up with a pretty easy method. Just use a piece of tape, put it right there and there's your off and on. These are some pretty good general settings for capturing the Milky Way. So first getting in, into your camera, setting up your camera in the proper settings. Having it on manual or bulb are the two areas that you want to have. So on your camera, switch it over to manual, you'll notice it by a big M on a Canon, or switching it over to bulb mode, you'll see a, a B or bulb written right there in the top left corner. The difference between the two is in a manual, you'll be able to set up all the same settings as you would on bulb, except it's limited to only 30 second shots. On bulb, you can actually use your intervalometer and set it up for however long you want it to go. So first we'll start off on, on manual. So the first you want to do, if you want to do a 30 second shot, is bring it up, not that way, but the opposite direction, up to 2, 3, 5, 8, and move it all the way up to 30. Remember on manual settings, the highest you can get generally is 30 seconds. 
Next thing you wanna do is change your ISO. ISO is pretty much your sensitivity. So what you wanna do is bring that up, not all the way up. See, the thing that with, with high ISO comes a lot of grain in your photos. So generally I would like to use 1600, at most 2000 or 2500. That's a very high amount of sensitivity. That's about as high as you wanna go. Down to your main menu. Next thing you wanna do is change your picture style over to landscape. This is gonna work best for you when since you're gonna be taking a very wide angle shot anyway, it'll give you the best contrast for your images. The next thing you wanna make sure you have is make sure that your image settings are set to raw. You do not wanna shoot images in JPEG format. You wanna have this done in raw format. The difference is compression. In JPEG, you will have a very high amount of compression, thus taking away a lot of the detail in your images. When you're set to raw, that will leave no compression at all and leave all the image detail in your images, giving you the best quality image. Lastly, what you wanna do is make sure your camera's dark processing is set to off. You don't wanna do any kind of dark image processing done in camera. You're gonna do that outside the camera in your processing after you've done your image captures. Photography. It's not dark yet, so we're gonna just do some daylight shots focusing on the distance. So what first thing you wanna do is go to live view if you have that option. On Canons, you have the live view right about here or someplace in this area of the Canon of the, of the camera. So you're gonna go ahead and press that and that'll actually give you a view of what's going on in front of you or what you're taking a picture of. Since we're doing a long way shot anyway, the galaxy, I'm gonna show you a shot of getting a shot of the clouds. So one cool feature of live view, it allows you to zoom in. And again, this being a manual camera or a manual lens, you don't have the option to focus automatically. So you will have to focus yourself manually. So zoom in at about its highest level. You can see I'm zoomed in on the clouds here. Go ahead and focus now on your subject. So you see I'm going more out of focus, moving in. And that's pretty close to focus. To get an even better shot, just zoom in even more. So now we're at about 10 times zoom. And that looks pretty well focused about there. So now you know this is about the right focus point for your shots. So you can go ahead and zoom back out and now you'll know you have a pretty well focused shot. Earlier I was talking about the lens, the Rokinon f2.8 14 millimeter lens. The 2.8 stands for the aperture. Basically it tells you how much light enters through that lens into your camera sensor. Usually the smaller the number, the more light you can get in. So those type of lenses tend to be a little more expensive but the de there's a definite benefit for having it. So I'll show you here the difference. Right now it's set at f2.8. So right now it's allowing the most light into your image sensor. As you bring it down to say f4, you can see that it'll actually start dimming the image because it's allowing less and less and less light into the camera. So you can see as I open it up, now it'll allow more light into the camera. When you're doing galaxy shots, you're gonna want the most amount of light coming into your camera. So about f2 point is about the best you can get for that. And since it's a far away shot, you won't have to deal with anything, anything such as blur in this type of a, a, a shot. Next part is ISO, or the sensitivity of your camera sensor. Right now I have it set to about ISO 100, which is a very, very low image sensitivity setting. And that's because we're still looking at the sunset. You can see the sun back there. And so it's still relatively bright. I'm gonna take a shot right now. You can see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see right there, sensitivity is pretty low. The aperture is wide open, but there's one more thing we have to talk about, which we talked a little bit earlier, which is shutter speed or how fast you're taking the image. Right now I'm taking the image at 1 2500th of a second, which is very fast. When you bring it up to 1 4th of a second, and take a shot, it allows in a whole lot more light overexposing your image. So you need to find the right balance of all these different settings. So f2.8, a nice wide aperture allowing in a lot of light, having the right shutter speed, and in this case we'll drop it down to about, just for the, for the sun, we'll drop it down to 1 1600th of a second, and ISO 100, which is a very low sensitivity setting. Take that shot and you come out with a nice pretty image of the sun setting over the horizon with some trees in the background.
Good settings to have for your Milky Way imaging is going to be about ISO 1600, 30 seconds, and f2.8. This will be a good area to start. Now if you want to take multiple shots or longer than 30 second shots and you don't have something in your camera that has automatic intervalometer such as Magic Lantern or the Nikon that has a, in, a built in intervalometer, you're going to need that remote control. Now for this you're going to have your settings here such as your delay, that is giving it how much time delay you want before you actually take the shot, how long of the shot you want it to be, the interval between the shots, the number of shots, and the last little option here is where you want it to beep while it's actually taking the shots. And then when you're, once you're set up, all you do is press start and it'll start taking your shot. I highly recommend that you visit Maxwell's YouTube channel and his Facebook site, Star Dude Astronomy. Go check it out, he has a bunch of great videos there, you'll enjoy it. Also, if this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.